What's up everybody? This is the chosen individual here and today it has been nearly a month since I last up uploaded. This is absolutely crazy and I have reasons for it. Don't you worry. I was out in America. I was uh, doing some stuff down in Florida. Out on vacation, now I'm back in school, which means that I'm probably still not going to upload. But hey, at least we have a video, so you should all be happy. So today, what we're going to do is that I have caught wind of the... Well, not caught wind. I have figured out the fact that the Bedrock Ore system for HBM's Nuclear Tech Mod has been completely reworked. And I want to have a word... <laughs> With HVM, because, dude, it was already pretty freaking complicated before. But now, holy Jesus Christ, this will blow your nuts off if you're not the greatest engineer that's ever lived. So, I'm going to try to explain it. Well, not try. I'm going to explain it today and tell you what you need to do to get uh, the best outputs possible. <clears throat> now, for starters, we need to get uh, some bedrock ore. Now, you can do this in many ways. <clears throat> My favorite, which is the fastest, is to simply use neutrino lens uh, with a frequency tied to a uh, depth uh, scanner satellite, um, which will allow you to uh, see all the bedrock ores inside the ground but that is not all of it you can also use the survey scanner and well when you're in a chunk with a bedrock core it will give you the message that there is a bedrock core and you might notice uh these values up here now what that does where's my hole there it is now what that does is there is a new sort of um uh gadget in hbms and it's called the bedrock or density scanner. It can be crafted with three vacuum tubes, two capacitors, a control unit casing, and three gold plates in a crafting table. And what this does is when you have it equipped or when you have it in your inventory, in the top left of your screen, it will show you uh, the metal values for the rare, um, well, for the bedrock ore that you are, well, the, the the values for the bedrock core of the chunk you are currently in. So, for example, in this chunk that I picked out, it has 1.9 uh, values of, air, of light metal, which is very good. 0 0.82 of heavy metals. 0 0.43 uh, for rare earth. 1.45 for actinides. 0 0.47 for non-metals. And crystallines for 0 0.36. Now, what do each of these mean? I will explain so right now. Now, basically, uh, light metal is all like the uh, basic ores, like, say, uh, iron and copper. Heavy metal is for, well, heavier metals, like, uh, say, tungsten. Hold on, I have, uh, I have the guide over here. Let me, uh, well, I have my notes over here. I'll just... Uh, I'll uh, let you know fully in a second, uh, if I can find them, that is, because I am a bit blind and tend not to see very well. Okay. So yeah, uh, I was right for light, there is iron and copper for heavy tungsten and lead. For rare earth, we have two more, cobalt and rare earth chunks, which will allow you to get a uh, rare earth ore. And for actinites, we have uranium and thorium. For non-metals, we have coal and sulfur. And for crystalline, we have redstone and cinnabar ores. So those are all that you can get um, with uh, the new bedrock ore system that is currently in place. Now, you will need a, a couple things to be able to begin the process. Well, first of all, you need to extract it. You still need a large mining drill, which I don't know if I've showcased how to build it before, but I think it, it has been made cheaper since uh, before what we saw. You'll need eight stone bricks, eight steel ingots, eight iron, two motors, and an analog circuit board in an assembly machine. Now, the analog circuit board can be made either with enhanced circuits, 
or in a soldering station, which we need four printed circuit boards, four lead wire, two capacitors, and three vacuum tubes. Now you just place it down. Make sure it's pointed the right way. Yep. And, well, you're obviously going to need energy, and you're going to need a drill bit. So I'm just grab that real quick. Uh, now, for certain tier, like before, for certain tiers, you need a certain, uh, amount. Well, you need a, a certain drill bit. I'm gonna go with the basic steel drill bit, diamond tipped, uh, because, uh, this bedrock core that is below me currently is only tier 1. You can make it with a steel drill bit and 16 diamond powder, and the steel drill bit can be made with 12 steel ingots and 4 toxic ingots. So let me just grab, oh wait, no, I meant to grab diamond tipped, boom, and now we have a drill bit at our disposal. Let's put in the speed upgrade so that it will uh, go faster. Now for now you don't need, I'm pretty sure you don't need uh, any fluids to process it, so you just extract it and that's it. That's it. You just put a crate here and so that, it, uh, so that the crate can absorb all of the uh, useless... Uh, blocks that we don't want because what we're really interested in is the bedrock ore. <clears throat> so let's wait for it to get to the bottom. There we go. Now we can turn off our drill. And as you can see, there's now a. Wait, am I, is I missing one? I think it's. Oh, never mind. I'm just gonna clear it up, but you you, you don't have to. All right. So as you can see, we have I can take this off now. We we have a, a exposed our hello. Is it bugged? I think it's bugged. Uh, we have our beautiful raw bedrock core, which is tier one. And well, what we need to do now is simply extract it. Yeah, there we go. The GUI went away. That's makes my life a whole bunch easier. All right. So. Let me extract a few samples of a uh, bedrock core, and then I'll show you. So I'm gonna uh, make a uh, small sorry here over here. Turn this on, and it should start to uh, extract um, bedrock core, and it should uh, be able to send it over there. I'm not wrong, I hope that is the case. You know what, just to make this easier, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go for the ferrurium uh, drill bit. As you can see, we already have our first bit of raw bedrock core. It also has the stats here, so if you don't want to build a density scanner for some reason, then you don't have to. Now, what you need to do with uh, this raw bedrock core is uh, quite simple, really. All you need to do is process it in this uh, brand new machine, the Bedrock Ore Processor. Now, backwards. There we go. You can just connect it with ducts. And there we go. And I will transfer uh, the raw Bedrock Ore into here. Now, this uh, does require a, f a few... Uh, um, conditions to get started so for starters you need a uh, water and also energy so let's grab a technetium steel barrel and a water fluid identifier uh, here it is oh and i also need an universal fluid duct i can get rid of the survey scanner and the better core density indicator now since i don't need them anymore it's the barrel here the ducts, water, identify this in there. So it's output, and there we go. Now we have water. And I'm simply going to place the infinite battery here. <clears throat> and what you'll see is that it will start working. So we'll pick up the materials. And well, this also takes uh, speed upgrades, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't take uh, overdrive or anything or anything else. Just place a crate here and in the Theory, it should start. Well, we need to connect it with ducts. And once we do this, it should. Yeah, there we go. Start to pump all of this 
uh, into that crate. Hold on, let me turn this drill off so that we can examine our samples in a more opportune way. Now, you'll also uh, realize that it's generating ore slop. Now, there are many ways to use ore slop, and I am going to show you them right here. For starters, if you don't want to process it, I recommend simply getting a tank. <clears throat> yeah. You're gonna need a um, ore slop fluid identifier. Boom, boom. And what this will do is uh, store the ore slop. And as I said, there are many different ways to um, to process it. The most basic of them is using an industrial solidification machine, which what it will do is allow you to turn uh, all this ore slop into uh, tar sand, which will allow you to make bitumen. So it's kind of a, a renewable source, quote unquote. Uh, so if I grab this and identify it, set this to input and output, boom, and then boom. As you can see, it starts solidifying. There's a speed upgrade, so that's a bit faster. And it will create tar sand, which you can then process to get bitumen and, well, sand. But if you don't want to do that, there is a far, well, you can also just store it uh, indefinitely. Uh, but there is a far better way uh, to use it which I didn't know up until very recently. Uh, what you need is a electrolysis machine. Let me grab the electrolysis machine, place it there. And then grab our beautiful ducts, connect this. Pour slop, pour slop. And... It should uh, I already wasted it all. Fine then, uh, let me in artificially inject some, so that I can demonstrate. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, the ore slop is here. My friends are texting me on Discord. Shut the hell up, I'm recording. There's a speed upgrade here. There's the infinite battery here, and it will very it will uh, begin electrolyzing the ore slop. And you will get a couple things uh, from the process of electrolyzing uh, ore slop. You'll get mercury. I'm pretty sure it is about... Uh, hold on, the recipe should be here. Yeah, you will get uh, 250 millibuckets of mercury per operation. You'll also get some nitre, uh, some limestone powder, and the best of all, sulfur. Which means that this can be used as a uh, renewable source of sulfur and all that if you care about that just gonna do that and there we go we'll store all that there oh geez i forgot the fluid uh, uh... Mm, let's put it all into a tank Oh wait, this is not the right type of dodge. Uh, tan. Put that down. I know that the pond is annoying, but there's nothing I can do about it. Mercury fluid identifier. Where are you? There you are. Identify that, and there we go. We should have mercury. Oh, I didn't even connect it. See what happens. See what happens. There we go. We got our mercury. Get rid of all this. Let's continue with the next step of uh, processing. <clears throat> so once you uh, process all this in the uh, in the uh, better core processing machine, you'll get all these uh, like little chunks of metal. So uh, you'll get depending on the quality of your um, of your bedrock core, so as you can, uh, if you go back to watch the footage, the quality of mine was very, very good in uh, most aspects. So I got, uh, what was that, like, 10 or 12 um, uh, pieces of raw bedrock core. I got 26 light metal bedrock cores, 20 actinide bedrock cores, 11 heavy metal, 6 rare earth, 6 non-metal, and 5 crystalline. Now... 
I'm pretty sure each of these uh, has their different processing chain for uh, different types. Oh, and by the way, the shredder does shred, so be careful not to fall in there. I just remembered that. I'm pretty sure these have different uh, processing chains uh, depending on it. So I'm going to mask some more so that I can probably show you and I'll be right back with you in a second. Hello. It has been about uh, 10 or 15 minutes and I have amassed a small quantity of ores to showcase with you. So that we can uh, go over how this process works. Now, uh, I have amassed 63 light metal bedrock, 27 for heavy metal, 15 for rare, rare earth, 49 for actinite, which is actually pretty good, 16 for non-metal, and 12 for crystalline. Now, onto the processing chain. It is a bit difficult, but if you stay with me, uh, you will be able to understand everything, hopefully. Now, the first thing that you have to do is to always, and I mean always, uh, wash the ores in an ore acidizer before uh, you do anything else. So, I'm going to grab water and uh, put it here. So to output and set both of those to water and what that will do is that will convert our light metal bedrock ore or well any bedrock ore water or acidizer into its washed variant which will give you higher yields than if you just like uh raw dog did to say something <laughs> so i'm gonna put infinite batteries here and uh well hold on let me just uh Make an output for these bad boys. Make some servos. There we go. And it should start exporting. And now we have two of these. Hold on, let me just get a uh, speed upgrade. To make this process just a bit quicker. And what it will do is it will convert all of our ores into their washed variants. Which will allow us to get a much higher output out of them. So, for example, let me uh, let me show you. If I grab uh, one rare earth uh, bedrock ore that has not been washed in an acidizer. Uh, if I centrifuge it right now, it will give me a rare earth bedrock ore primary faction. Which you then centrifuge again, and it will give you one cobalt powder and one rare earth ore chunk. But if I compare it to its washed variant, so let me pull up the washed variant. The washed variant uh, gives you two primary factions, and additionally, uh, from there, what you can do is all is process them again in acidizer with more fluids to get the outputs that you want, basically. So let's just uh, wait for this to uh, to finish. Let's put speed three because I'm a bit impatient. And there we go. We'll just continue converting all of our ores into their washed variants. Doesn't take very long. If, uh, overdrive will become much, much faster. I'm not gonna do that because I don't know. Many because uh, overdrive updates are uh, upgrades are expensive, you know. In the meantime, let's make uh, the second step. Now, uh, what you need to do is simply cent centrifuge uh, your uh, washed uh, chunks of um, of ore. And what this will do is give you the primary fractions of those ores. I'm pretty sure that there are some that uh, give out others. That give out uh, byproducts. So let's uh, start this. As you can see, it will give us two light metal bedrock ore primary fractions. And two gravel, which is a bit more of a side product. Let's uh, make an under conduit to be able to pull these out. And another one to 
pull out uh, the uh, the uh, our earnings basically. You just grab the gravel. White lid. White lid. There we go. And now all the gravel that is generated as a bag product will simply go in here. After which you can store it, you can process it further, you can do whatever you want with it. And we get to reap all the benefits, aka the primary fractions, out of all of our ore. As you can see, uh, I'm pretty sure they double, so it's gonna take a bit of time. Uh, I'm gonna put some overdrive to make this much, much faster, because otherwise I'm gonna lose for attention. And as you can see, well, the numbers are going up much faster now. And they double. They double, all right. As you can see, we are getting the primary fractions of all of our beautiful ore variants. There's still some that are left to go. Be patient. Good things in life come if you're patient. All right, there we go. We got all the primary fractions out of all of our ores. We got uh, two stacks of uh, primary fractions for light metal ore, uh, 54 for heavy, uh, 24 for crystalline, 30 for rare earth, uh, 20, uh, 64, well, a stack and a half for actinites, and 32 for non-metal. So now what you do is you're gonna need another ore acidizer, but this time we're not gonna treat it with water. Now, there is a split you can go for here. There are two options, basically. Now, basically what these primary fractions are is like basically the essence of the ore. And you can treat it with a few different chemicals to uh, get what you want. So, let's start. Uh, if you want... Uh, higher outputs, then you 100% have to uh, treat it with solvent or high performance solvent in the ore acidizer, and it'll, I'm pretty sure it will double your yields again. So that's pretty good if you need a high amount of ore. I'm not going to do it this time, but you could still do it if you want. If you want, I can make a follow up video where I, I do that and I make like an automatic sorting system. What we're really interested in for today is the weight differentiation mechanic. So what happens is that you can take these primary fractions and you could like just centrifuge them. And for example, for a uh, light metal, you could get one iron powder and one copper powder, which I mean, isn't that good, but it's not terrible either. Or you can treat them with either liquid hydrogen or chlorine gas. You can also treat them with uh, sulfuric acid. I'm not sure what that does. That might come in the follow-up video if I do make one. But this is basically the weight differentiation. If you want heavier elements, then you need to use liquid hydrogen in the ore acidizer, and it will give you the light metal bedrock ore primary fraction higher weight. So basically, more heavy elements. You're prioritizing them. And if you treat it with chlorine gas, you'll get the lower weight, which are the lighter elements. In this case, uh, for light metal bedrock core, the heavier um, fraction is made from, uh, is composed primarily of iron. So I'm pretty sure it will give you two times the iron that it gives you the copper. And for lower weight, the opposite is true. It will give you two times the copper than uh, what it gives you of iron. And the same goes for, uh, for example, the heavy metal. Uh, you can also treat it with liquid hydrogen or, uh, or hold on, chlorine gas to differentiate its weight. So this is the fraction for lower weight, and this is the fraction for higher weight. Now, 
Uh, which ones did this give you? It gave you tungsten and something else. Uh, hold on, I'll, uh, oh, I'll, uh, I'll check it again, because, uh, it's a, uh, you know. Uh, okay, it gave you tungsten or lead. Now, I'm pretty sure that if you prioritize, uh, higher weight elements, it will give you mostly lead, since lead tends to be pretty dense. Or not, because apparently HBN didn't do his breathing. So if you prioritize a higher weight, it will give you denser elements. So for example, or is tungsten more dense than lead? I have no idea. But uh, in this case, it will give you two times the tungsten that it will give you the lead. For rare or earth, if you treat it uh, for higher weight, it will give you two times the cobalt than it gives you rare earth. And when you treat it with chlorine gas, the opposite is true. When you do this for actinides, the heavier element is uranium, the lighter element is thorium. For non-metal, the heavier is coal, the lighter is sulfur. And for crystalline, the uh, heavier is redstone, while the lighter is cinnabar. So, you can see how you can, like, make all these big processing chains to get what you want. Now, for the sake of this uh, demonstration, let's say I want... Um, mm, 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 mm. we're gonna make them, uh, well, for, uh, let's process them in bits. First, let's go for the actinides, because uranium and thorium are pretty, in, uh, necessary elements for middle and late game, because they are radioactive, they work for your nuclear reactors, so what I'm going to do is uh, prioritize our actinide chunks for heavier elements. Now what you need is liquid hydrogen. So I'm just put the barrel down here. And put the ducts down. Liquid hydrogen, liquid hydrogen. Change that. Nope. It doesn't work. Liquid hydrogen. And liquid hydrogen. I'll put the upgrades inside. Well, the uh, batteries and the upgrades. And I left my infinite barrel here. Thank you, sir. And it will output the liquid hydrogen. Now, I'm going to make this. I'm going to grab... Where's the actinide? There it is. Grab one of these. These are not radioactive or anything, by the way, so that's good. Place it here and let that be the white list. As you can see, it will start going in here, it will start processing, and it will give us actinide bedrock or primary fraction higher weight. God damn it, that is a mouthful. So let me just play it out the other side. Uh, with some uh, servos. Where that the ore acidizers don't make any noise when most machines don't make noise. And we are getting higher weight fractions for actinide, which, afterwards, what it will do is it will, it will allow us to get uh, more uranium. Now, as you can see here, you can treat it in electrolysis, and it will give you one block and three ingots of um, of uh, uranium, which is actually really, really good if you don't want any iron. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to make it in the regular old centrifuge since it gives you two uranium powder for one thorium powder. And it will also give us some actinide bedrock ore crumbs, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. So let's just uh, give this some time. Oh, like and a new animation. That's fun. So I'll, uh, I'll be back with you when this is all done processing. It'll take a bit. Maybe about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, but it won't be uh, like horrendously long. And you can also speed it up with upgrades if you think that it's too long. So you'll see a transition, and I should be back with the goods. Alright, so it's been 10 or 15 minutes, and I have now got all of my uh, primary fractions higher weight for Acti Barrel Core. And the next step in the processing chain is. 
Uh, actually, the last one. Uh, well, at least if you use this method. So, what you are going to do is you're going to put down two centrifuge. Well, you're gonna. The, the next step is to centrifuge it again. We have centrifuged it, I'm pretty sure, twice by now. Okay, some lines for. I don't know if it. Does it create weight? Kind of, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna make a line underneath for uh, the ore chunks. Wait, crumbs, crumbs, yeah, or crumbs. And we're simply going to begin processing our beautiful ores. And as you can see, it will give us some uranium powder, uh, some thorium powder, and actinide bedrock ore crumbs, which I'm actually going to take. And I am going to make a small a filter here. White list. There we go. And I will collect all of the actinide bedrock ore crumbs here. And I'll tell you what you can do with them in a minute. Uh, let's uh, get three out. Go. And then begin outputting the rest of our uh, our gains. As you can see, so far we have a stack, well, almost a stack of uranium ore and half a stack of thorium powder. Now, as I told you before, you can uh, get just uranium with uh, electrolysis. The problem with that is that requires a foundry setup, and well, it's a bit more complicated. But it is definitely worth doing. I'm simply going to wait for all of this to be done. I'm going to add in some overdrive upgrades just to make this faster. So I don't have to uh, stitch more video together again like Frankenstein's. There we go, one of them is done. And uh, in theory, the number of uh, uranium powder should always be um, double. Of the thorium powder. And uh, to finish. There we go. Yeah. So as you can see, we got a total of. Let me organize this. Uh, three stacks of uranium powder, which can then smelt into ingots. And on top of that, four. And a stack and. A bit more than half of thorium powder, which you can also smell into smelt into ingots. Now I am simply going to transfer them over here for display. There we go. So this is uh, that is for actinides. Next on the list is gonna be, uh, let's say, Rare Earth. So for Rare, rare Earth, if I uh, pull the list back up, um, you'll see, well, you won't see, you'll hear <laughs> that uh, Cobalt is the heavier element, while Rare Earth is the lighter element. So, obviously, we want Dash, not Cobalt for the moment. So what we're going to do is get some chlorine gas. Uh, we're not going to use it for war crimes. Don't worry. I'm going to simply identify that. Chlorine gas. And what this will do is, once again, the weight differentiation. It will... Um, it will uh, allow us to... Um, This will allow us to uh, make uh, make the specific element that we want. As you can see, it is uh, already getting uh, turned. Let me just uh, turn this off so we can see uh, the amounts. So far, we have gone eight rare earth ore chunks which is double the cobalt powder, and some rare earth bedrock ore crumbs. I'm also going to add this to the filter, so that way we can, um... 
so that way I can show you how to uh, process the crumbs later on. Because this is technically a byproduct, not even a, uh, a primary product. As you can see, we got these, the rare earth better or primary fraction lower weight. So remember, liquid hydrogen for, for uh, heavier elements, chlorine gas for lighter elements. So let's just uh, wait a bit for this to be done. And then we'll open this floodgate back up and it will allow us to get all of our earnings. It's good to be patient. It is good to be patient. Must be. Now, well, you can, uh, well, and next up on the list is gonna be, uh, 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 um, light metal. Let's just, um, wait a minute for this to be done. All right, there we go, it's done. We got all the heavy primary fractions uh, variants. Now we just open this back up and we'll start flowing. And we'll start processing it in our beautiful centrifuge. And it will give us all of uh, our materials, which in this case is cobalt powder and earth ore. So as you can see, the rare earth, earth ore chunk is double the amount of the cobble. Let's make another one, another temporary storage here. There we go. Next up on the list is light metal. Now, you, now this uh, process might get a bit repetitive, so I'm gonna show uh, light metal, which is what most people might be interested in for the current moment. And uh, for light metal, I want, uh, let's say, well, not, I think but it's actually much easier to simply add two loops and make one of them for, uh, for uh, liquid hydrogen and the other one for uh, chlorine gas. So I'm going to do just that. There we go. Whoops, it's not on the slot. And I'll identify this with liquid hydrogen and U2. So that that way we'll be able to get the heavier uh, elements. So we grab this, grab that, and make it a white list, and then put that there. And it should start working. If we uh, close this back up once again. You'll see that we'll get the light metal better core from refraction higher weight. So let me just uh, get an overdrive to speed this process up. Because otherwise it's going to get pretty boring. And well, you don't have to do this. You can make It'll be much easier and faster to make just like uh, one loop for uh, heavy elements and another for lighter elements. Then just simply switch in between them with, I don't know, a redstone switch or something. Or you can just raw dog it, but you won't get as much. And it is, uh, for how cheap it is, it is actually more recommended that you go with the approach of just making two loops. As you can see so far, we are getting uh, 54 uh, light metal battle gore. Still going. Let me just give it a minute and we'll uh, take a look at how this is going. The electrolysis machine has so far made some niter, sulfur, limestone powder, and a bunch of mercury. So yeah, this is the best way. Actually, now that I'm uh, here waiting, 
sort of. Let me show you how to process these ore crumbs. Now, how you process these ore crumbs is it's actually pretty funny. You can turn it back into rare earth bedrock ore. Well, you can turn it back into its like a uh, central component by putting it in an acidizer. Now, I'm not gonna do that today because well, I'm lazy and I don't want to do it. The cheapest way to process it would be with an arc furnace. So let me just uh, grab an arc. So like smelt them down or something. You can just shred them, acidize them, electrolyze them, and that's pretty much it. Okay. So why is this here? That is kind of weird. It's gonna be there. And that is gonna be the final output for this video. If you want me to make a more elaborate setup, I'll I'll tell you in a minute what you need to do. Although you probably already know. All right, guys. So that's uh that's the new uh bedrock ore processing system for HPM's nuclear tech. Oh, hold on a minute. Shut the hell up. All right, there we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was the new ore processing um system for uh, HBM's nuclear tech mod. Now, the system isn't as complicated as I initially thought, because, like, I was on vacation, and I saw a Savage Vegeta's video, and I was like, oh, god damn it, they reworked the system, this is gonna be so hard to figure out, I'm gonna be screwed, I'm not gonna be able to, uh, do it in my new world, I'm not gonna be able to, uh, uh, get all the materials I want, and it turns out I was wrong. I mean, it is certainly a lot more expensive than before, and I'm pretty sure that these only generate on well, that new ores only generate on new chunks. So any chunks that were uh, preloaded are pretty much out of the question, which is unfortunate because this new system is really really cool. But what can you do? I guess. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want me to make a more elaborate setup, like the second, um, weight differentiation loop, uh, be, go a little more into depth with the, with the crumbs and recycle them back into the system to get even more gains from them, as well as, uh, yap more about, <laughs> about ore percentages and things like that, then please do leave a like down below. And also remember to subscribe to my channel because we are at an undetermined number of subscribers. I cannot remember how far through am I. Holy crap, I have not checked in a while. Yeah, so at the time of recording, I have 232 subscribers. That is your, that is Thorium 232. Can we get to 300? 
Depends on you guys. So yeah, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, if you found this helpful, if you found this useful. If this uh, got you out of a stalemate situation, uh, share with your friends too, because any bit of exposure I can get is absolutely amazing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to get to work on other projects, like for example, videos on other topics, uh, other games, other things, because... I don't really want to do just HBM. I don't want to get burnt out and then just like get bored of the mod and leave it. I'm also going to start working on a new survival series video because I haven't made one of those in a long time. And we have some really big progress and some really cha big changes to talk about, especially with the new string of HBM's updates. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. And also remember to join my Discord link down below. This has been The Chosen Individual, and I'll see you next time. It's been a long month, guys, but I'm back. Peace out, gamers.